All right, guys, so we're going to get into kind of a deeper topic here, and this is troubleshooting. I know you guys have a lot of experience uh, troubleshooting typical systems on site. A lot of the steps are still the same, yet there are a few extra steps to take you know, with, our, with our products. Yeah. One thing to note with our 9 Series and 9 Series Pro that you want to you wanna take into account is the lights have power all the time. So if you measure voltage of, let's say this light right now, it's gonna measure at 15 volts at the connection. And it's gonna measure that because even though it's off, it's listening to the controller for a command on what to do. So it's not like a typical landscape lighting system to where it's either all on or all off. If the transformer has power and these LEDs on the transformer are on, the lights will have power as well. So that's one confusing factor. And we've also run into that with zoning. So, you know, remember you have your two hour window to zone. That's not two hours that the light has been on. That's two hours that the light has had power. So we've had people that say, you know, well, the light hasn't, you know, the system hasn't been on but 15 minutes, why isn't it working? Well, they meant turning the lights right. on versus flipping the switch on the transformer and turn it back on. Yep. So so that's number one, and that's probably the biggest difference mm -hmm. between our system and every other system out there. But remember, our system, it, through the app, you may say, turn on my flag light only, mm -hmm. and nothing else turns on. And so the lights always have to be listening for what to do. So, they so when a technician is measuring voltage, when should they measure that? When the light is off or when the light is on? Good question. So we should measure that when the light is on. And the reason is, is that if you have any resistance due to corrosion in the wire, which we have seen in the field where a, a trunk line is nicked, got corroded, what you will find is that when the light is off and not drawing hardly any power, it'll measure 15 volts because there's no current going through the wire. When that light demands power and more current to go through the wire, the resistance in the in the nick and the, and the corrosion will cause a, a big, huge resistance in the wire and not allow the enough current for the light to power itself. And what you're gonna see is, is that the voltage is gonna go from 15 when it's off, you're gonna hit a command to turn all the lights on, and that voltage will drop down to two or three volts usually, which means the light's demanding power and it can't get not it. Not getting it. So what would your number rather be? What would you, What's that preferred voltage number that you would like to have at the fixture? Yeah, good question. So we prefer above 10 volts mm -hmm. usually. Now the light will work a little bit below that. And what you're gonna see is when the light stops working because of a power load issue, it's gonna go from about 10 to about seven. It won't go 10, nine, eight, seven. It's gonna go from 10 down to seven. And it's just because it either has enough power to operate or it doesn't. And when it doesn't, when it tries to draw it, that voltage will drop. And does that matter what color you test that on? Typically not really. So most of the colors draw about the same power with our system. They're all calibrated. They vary a little bit, but most of the colors draw about the same power. So you can you can really test on any power. Probably the one that draws the, the a little bit more than the rest is cold white. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do like a 5000K for your testing, that would be that would be preferred. So another simple check too, guys, if you see a fixture that's simply not working, you're unable to get control of it, take it out of the ground, plug it directly into the transformer. Yeah. Give it a command, see what happens. A lot of times you'll see that it works. Okay, that's telling you right there that there's a connection issue. So the first thing you want to do, if a light is not coming on with a non-command, the first thing that I would do is I would cycle power on the transformer. So I'm going to unplug this transformer. I'm going to plug it back in, and what you're going to notice is that all the lights come on to their last color. So what that does is it rules out communication. There's no communication going on over the wire. So if that light doesn't come on, it's not because it didn't communicate, probably because it didn't have power yeah. is the most likely scenario. So then I would say, okay, now I know it doesn't have, you know, it didn't come on. Now I'm going to take it out of the ground, connect it right to the transformer. If it still doesn't come on when you connect right to the transformer, check and make sure there's no corrosion nicks or any, any in that lead. In, we've seen that yep. um, on some lights that have come back. And if that's not the case, then it may be a bad light, but that's rare. It's rare for the light not to do anything. Mm -hmm. If something happens to a light, it's typically that a color is, is not working or it, it's not communicating very well or something yep. like that. Yep. Typically for it to do nothing is just Rare. something we don't see very yep. often. What else we got to cover here? Bad communication. So if you have like really bad communication, 
happening to where it's just it's just not working very well when you give it send commands to the lights you want to check and make sure a the first thing we're going to ask you is are there any other white lights on the system mm -hmm. if there are we're going to we're going to demand that you take them off because they will as we've talked in about in, in earlier videos it will disrupt the communication if you're going to do that we have a stem module that's made for that and then secondly we're going to ask you about the load on each on each trunk line so we're going to ask you how far the lights are away what the load is it's a key indicator if the lights furthest away are not communicating and the ones closer are mm -hmm. those are the things that we're going to go through and then every once in a while to be to be frank you have a light that just doesn't communicate very well and, and we'll replace that we test everything here 100 percent but every once in a while something happens that's the other thing that you have to keep in mind these are computers in the light that's so right there are circuit boards in the light there's intelligence in the light there is a lot going on inside this light so every once in a while something happens and and, and we'll replace it mm -hmm. so something we find a lot as well is with access points customer says all of a sudden my my transformer is offline it's not working correctly go to the blink menu on the front of the transformer check out what it's telling you if it's blinking more than three times so if it's blinking four five six times typically you'll be in the four blanks to five blank range when this happens you're connected to an access point but you can't get to the internet mm -hmm. typically when that happens the access point um, system a reboot on that system on the entire system will fix that problem and what happens is is that an access point for whatever reason stops communicating to home base what customers are going to tell you is well everything else works in the house well everything else like your phone your phone will switch and if, if it finds that it doesn't have access to the internet it's going to switch to a different access mm -hmm. point if it can typically with our stuff we do try to switch but typically the other access points are generally too far away for us mm -hmm. and so we're connected to the access point that we can be and we just can't get to the internet so if it's blinking four or five times first thing i would do is reboot reboot the access points and and unplug them plug them back in repeaters also same kind of same kind of deal repeaters also have that problem every once in a while so a lot of times that'll that'll fix that problem we see a common issue with the three blinks on the transformer as well so most of the time it indicates an incorrect password yep. you'll see that a lot of times getting a getting a system online and we've been through that <clears throat> we walked through that during that video but sometimes too you'll come back on an, on an existing system and see that the lights are blinking three times most of the time that indicates that the uh, that the homeowner has changed uh, a Wi-Fi setting, whether they got a new router, whether they got a new password, whatever it is. That's correct. And and then sometimes, I mean, I was troubleshooting with a customer for a couple of days with a system that, that, that went offline. And it took him, it took this person two days to tell me, finally told me, I didn't even know to ask, that he moved his access point into a different room. No. And so simple questions like that, have you changed anything to your network? Have mm -hmm. you moved any access mm -hmm. points? Have you changed passwords yep. on your system? Yep. Cable company comes to get a new router. They never, for whatever reason, make it the same password and, and network name as the old one. They just make it the generic yep. shiny Apple, whatever. And then all their devices need reset, including the landscape lighting system. That's right. the other thing. So they will remember, a lot of times the customers will remember to reset every other password <laughs> TVs, <laughs> everything, everything yeah. except they don't think about the landscape lighting <laughs> system, and then they'll call you and say it doesn't, it, it's not connecting, and yeah. then and then so these simple questions a lot of times lead to the right answer. Well, and a lot of times they don't think about it either because again the schedule is saved in the yeah. transformer, so it's yeah. constantly going through the motions, going through the schedule every night. They may not realize there's a problem till they actually go to change it make a setting, make a command, Great whatever. Point. We had a customer call the other day and he said, you know, we told him it's been offline for six months and he was shocked because he, he said, well, I just tried to change it the other day and it didn't work. And so that's why I'm calling. And we're like, well, it's been offline for six months, but it was still running the schedule. Mm -hmm. So he didn't, he didn't know. Yep. Last thing is you want to make sure that your network is 2.4 gigahertz. So most routers now are switchable between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Um, some do both bands, but you have to make sure that the 2.4 is available. Uh, there's a reason we use 2.4. Most people think that five is better. Five is better in some cases. Five is better if you're watching movies on your smart television. Five is better in some other things that need speed. So five speed. We don't need speed. And what happens is that the faster the Wi-Fi network is on the, on the frequency, the higher the frequency, the smaller the range gets. 
And so we don't care about speed, we care about range. So we pick the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum because it has a, it's slower, but it has a, a bigger range and can have more distances. So we have run into a couple cases where with an Eero system, I had to actually get online with, or on tech support with Eero to where their system said they were producing 2.4. They ultimately weren't. We had to reboot the Eero and then it started, mm -hmm. and then it started doing the 2.4 gigahertz network. So we have to have 2.4 for everything to connect properly. Yeah, so these are these are uh, basic steps really to, to kind of check your your Haven lighting system. I think this is a great uh, great starting point. If you can remember, to check these things even before you call us. Say, okay, I've done this, I've done that. We're still going to walk you through some yeah. of these steps just to ensure that hey, you know this we we are we do know that that we can check off each of these before we you know issue a warranty for a failure. But yeah, I think this will this will get get everybody going and and. Um, and again, you can always call us too. Yep. Um, we're available day and, and sometimes night. Sometimes we can see a little bit more information than you can. So it's helpful if you're, you know, before you leave that property, if you're kind mm -hmm. of stuck, give us a call and we yep. can help. There are some situations where we can see what time things drop. And so a lot of times I'll see that two or three controllers at the property has multiple, all drop at the same time. 100% of the time, that's a network problem. Mm -hmm. And so we can alert you right away to say, listen, this is not, right. this has nothing to do with us. This is a, they've got a network problem that they have to fix. So there are some things that we can see to help you out as well. So um, before you leave the property, certainly give us a call. Yep. Thanks for watching.